Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, I would like to ask you, where is aviation industry now? How would you estimate the fact? Is it slow development, rapid growth? Where are we? Okay. If we go back to 2019, it was the golden year for all aviation in the world. I mean, the global aviation number, the flight number, the passenger number reached up to 9.2 billion passengers globally. With the COVID at 2020, it went down to 2.7 billion. So we had only 30% of the whole traffic of the world in 2020. By 2021, with the pandemic effect still, it went up to 4.5 billion passengers. La 2022, we reached up to 6.6. .6, and this year, the expectation is to reach up to 8.4. So we'll be still below 2019 figures. Oh. Uh, however, in some parts of the world, this traffic surpassed 2019. In Europe, we are, we are below like 3%, but we'll be catching up with 2019 figures next year, end of next year. Which are these parts of the world which have surpassed, as you say, the figures of 2019? In our region, if we talk about Europe, the close proximity to Europe, the non-EU airports, uh, the Eastern European airports, the Turkish airports, are even below 2019 figures. Because of the Russian and Ukraine war, we have a big effect in European airports. Because of the bans of the Russian flights, flying over the Russian airspace, we have a loss of traffic still. But in non-EU airports, it's above 2019. The growth is mainly towards the east. I mean, in Central Asia, in uh, Southeast Asia, the traffic numbers are well above 2019. We have missing passengers in China, if we talk globally. We have missing passengers still in the US. In Africa, it's picking up well. In Europe, as I said, by 2024, we'll be catching up with 2019 figures. Um, how would you characterize the equality between uh, European and Chinese uh, carriers? You said yourself uh, they can use the airspace uh, above Russia, European carriers can't. So is, are they equal? Not really, not really, because in uh, EU, because of the sanctions, of course, e e we cannot fly over the Russian airspace, which brings us additional costs because you have to fly around the airspace or you stop those flights. And some other carriers are taking the benefit of this because they use the shortest ways and they can fly over Russia and they can carry Russian passengers as well. So it brings a bit inequality to EU-based carriers like Air Baltic, of course, uh, but hope that this will be fixed and we hope that the war will be over. Otherwise, it brings an inequality, unfortunately. Uh, what are the reasons, uh, I mean, be, um, besides the technological restrictions, restrictions yes. of flights, uh, why uh, we are still climbing up those figures of uh, 2019 uh, in Europe? Are these uh, um, changed habits maybe already that we have That's true. become That's true. less uh, moving around? That's true. I mean, before the pandemic, we had a lot of business travel. Today we see that the leisure travel and ethnic travel is more than the business travel. So during the COVID period, many people couldn't visit their relatives, families, which are living abroad. So we call this like a more revenge travel during the pandemic for two, three years. The people who couldn't fly, who couldn't their holidays properly are now using this. Revenge so travel. Revenge travel, we call it. Interesting. And they are, uh, you know, more frequently visiting the, the people who has the budget for this. We see that they fly more frequently. But uh, in exchange for this, the business travel slowed down. With the pandemic, we all get used to these uh, digital meetings. So it's still keeping the trend. It brought a lot of agility, actually, because you save a lot of time. Uh, I mean, it's easy. You can set up the meetings anytime. Uh, so it brings a new era to the business, but we know that business travel will come back as well because people still need to look eye to eye, shake hands uh, to make their deals. It will come back. But what are these uh, challenges or restrictions that still keep and will keep um, influencing air travel today in the context of the conference maybe as well? Yes, there are a couple of them actually. Uh, the high inflation, 
globally, not only EU, EU's own inflation, recession in, in Europe, of course, and also uh, a bit of the sustainability. People are more cautious in air travel these days because we hear a lot of, about uh, carbon emissions, high carbon emissions. People are cautious, but the main reason today is the economy. Uh, the forum seeks to um, talk about Baltic aviation challenges. So we like to talk about Baltics and um, especially Riga Airport as yeah. one of the... Um, hub. Yeah, Main hubs hub. or, 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 or really um, rapidly um, evolving airport. Um, do you see that as well? Are we still the, I don't know, number one in those... Um, um, in the Baltic cooperation? Yes, uh, yes, in the Baltics, in the Baltics region, and uh, is the Baltics interesting for the big companies? That's for sure. That's for sure. We are very lucky that we have Air Baltic. I mean, we are very strategically located in Riga, because we are the center of the Baltics, and we could easily be the center for Northern Europe as well, because Riga, Latvia, is very strategically located. And having a strong carrier, a hub carrier, makes the difference. With Air Baltic, with the new fleet, with the number of aircraft and connections, uh, the destinations that they are flying, Riga has a unique positioning. So, unfortunately, this pandemic was never expected. And we, it, it took three, of, three years of us, then came the war, and still continuing. But we know that there is a strong demand for Northern Europe, and Riga is the hub, currently is the hub. And with Air Baltic growth, it will continue to be. Uh, because if we think uh, strategically, Latvia is a small country. We have a small population here. Uh, all Baltics is around 6 million population. But if we look into Northern Europe, we are like 32 million uh, people living in North Europe. So our target as uh, Riga Airport, I mean, because we are operating in Riga Airport as well as a company, uh, should continue to grow as a hub uh, for Northern Europe, which is doable because airport is investing a lot. Airport growed a lot during the past 10 years. We know that there are considerations to grow further in terms of the size of the airport. Rail Baltica coming into Riga Airport is the utmost importance because we need to convert Riga into a multimodal hub. It should not be only a OND destination where passengers come into Latvia stay in Latvia and go back. It's already a transfer and transit airport, but if we have this multimodal transport with the rail track, road, and the airport, it will definitely bring more cargo volume, more transit, and more traffic coming into country. But among these uh, tasks that you mentioned, are there some that uh, should be boosted or let them go? Somehow we'll catch up and uh, the situation some, will... <laughs> there are some to be boosted, of course. I think strong backing of the government, the tourism ministry, to uh, propose Riga, Latvia as a destination is more in, very important. We have experience from our other airports. For instance, we are operating a lot of airports as a group of companies in Europe, in Central Asia, Africa, Middle East. When the ministry puts its hand in the game to promote the destination, it helps. We like transfer and transit traffic, but we like more origin and destination traffic because it brings more value to the country. The transferring passenger just sees the air airport, spends some money and time there, but doesn't see the city itself. The passenger who gets into the city spends a lot in the taxi, hotel, other means of uh, goods, so it brings a lot of value to the country. That's why. Uh, Riga itself, Latvia also, should be promoted by the, uh, the, the, by the tourism boards of the country. And we, it will definitely grow because Air Baltic is the number one carrier mm. in, in the Baltics. Yeah, sure, and we, cannot, believe, yeah. we believe it will become in the top three in the Northern Europe as well. Sure, you cannot sit back in those uh, issues. <laughs> we should be <laughs> very active something. because yeah. aviation is very agile. There is a lot of uh, you know, competition as well. Uh, even if you, you could be the largest or strongest, you should always be cautious. Thank, Thank you. you very much.